good morning friends it is really early i'm not even ready for the day but we have a lot going on this morning so i had to get started we're going to get through this videoing i actually am dog sitting for my daughter and my son-in-law and i need to go and let their dog out hence why i just threw on clothes and i'm going to do that but i decided i am going to take my instapot along with me i don't know if she has one or not I should have asked her that. I wouldn't have to drag this along, but that's okay. I'm gonna take my Instapot with me and I have some chicken that I pulled out of the freezer and I'm gonna cook this while I'm over there letting the dog out and letting him eat and do those things so I'm not wasting time, but I'm not gonna video at their home. And I'm okay sharing with you that they are in beautiful Hawaii right now because you won't see this until after they're back. So we're gonna do three kitchen meals that to get a set up for the week it is a sunday today as well as if you want to throw these in the freezer and make them ahead put them all in the freezer that way you have freezer meals that works too i might end up freezing one or two depending upon how much chicken i get i might make two of a couple of them normally i would make two of a couple of them but i don't have a lot of room to put stuff back in the freezer because right now the chicken is in nice bags like these and i don't have room for a casserole dish so we're gonna do three chicken meals this morning. I'll walk you through that. And that's gonna get us set up for the week because our week's gonna be crazy with me watching the puppy still. So anyways, thanks for coming along. Good morning and if you are new here, welcome. My name is Carrie and this is Homestead by the Highway. And we're going to cook up some chicken and get the day going. Oh, I didn't bring the trivet. Okay, so that didn't work as you saw. So we're back at my house, so I will actually walk you through what we're gonna do. I took over a jar of, this is turkey broth, not chicken, but I'm just gonna use it in with this. My mom and I canned that together a while ago. And I'm going to, that's the plate I thawed them on. The missing piece. So I've got that in the bottom. I'm gonna add one cup of broth to this. I'm going to, this is cook for eight minutes, eight, eight to 12 minutes if it's thawed. That's a little more than a cup, but I'll be all right. Uh, eight to 12 minutes if it's thawed but the time it takes for the pressure to come up and we're going to let it naturally release for five minutes and then we'll push the button and let it finish venting. People forget that Instapots, I have a love-hate relationship with mine. People forget that there's that extra time. They're like, oh, I can cook chicken in eight to 12 minutes. Well, no, you can't. It takes 20, 25 to get eight to 12 minutes of cook time. So I'm going to get this going and then I'm going to shower and get ready for the day while this is cooking. Normally I don't mind touching chicken. I don't know why. All of a sudden I got weirded out by the thought and I don't really want to dump all that juice in there. I don't think it would hurt at all. It's just chicken juice. That's a lot of chicken. I don't think I've ever cooked that much chicken in here before. Usually I do one pack. Turn it on. And I am going to choose pressure cook. 12 minutes. I'm going on the high end because I have so many in there. I want it to pressure cook on high. Start. So we're going to let that do its thing. And we will be back. We're back. And boy, do I feel better. <laughs> okay, so this cooked for the 12 minutes. It's 
up to seven minutes of natural release. It said to do it five. I'm sure seven's not gonna hurt. I am looking for a hot pad. So, if you've never used one of these before, I always put a hot pad over my hand and I push that. And now that's gonna release. While this is going, and while I was out here in the kitchen waiting for this, I have water on the stove to boil to make noodles. And I have water on the stove because I'm gonna make some stuffing. I didn't even tell you what we we're making today. We are gonna do a chicken alfredo. That is one of my husband's favorites. He loves the one that we buy at Costco and they didn't have it. And I had all this chicken going, so I decided I would just make him some. I've got fresh Parmesan to grind up and it's gonna be super yummy. I hope he loves it as much as he loves theirs. So I'm gonna do chicken alfredo. I'm going to do a chicken stuffing bake as well as we're gonna do chicken burritos, enchiladas, enchilada. It's gonna be a soft shell rolled up with enchilada sauce on it. We love them. And so we're gonna do those as well. So we're gonna do those three things. And if we have time, because I try to keep these videos under 30 minutes, I will show you, I am finishing up the process of doing the garlic from the 2022 season, because it's time it started to sprout, so it needed to be preserved. I didn't do a whole video on it. I have one from a few years ago that I can uh, put up here if you'd like to go watch that on preserving the garlic. But I peeled 354 cloves of garlic and got them all processed up except 10, which is gonna be an experiment we're gonna do. So let's get this chicken going. I grabbed my KitchenAid mixer. I'm going to make use of it today. I'm gonna to use it to shred my chicken because I'm feeling a little lazy and I have so much of it. It wouldn't take me long to do it by hand for sure, but I have a lot of pots on the oven right now and uh, let's get this out of here. A great tool to shred a lot of chicken fast. You do have to be careful because you can turn it into mush because it will just devour it. I am going to cut two of them and I'm going to chunk them up for my husband's chicken alfredo. So I'm not going to put those into the bowl. These are chicken breasts that I got on a good deal when chicken was on sale a while ago. And they had been in the freezer and I'm trying to work through stuff that's in my freezer and in my pantry. So I tried to pick recipes for stuff that I already had in the house. The only thing I had to go buy was the noodles because I didn't have, I didn't have fettuccine and I didn't have anything but elbow macaroni and spaghetti, which I could have used, but I wanted something else for that. So if you haven't done this before, I'm gonna let that cool really quick. I just put this paddle on there. And put it in, lock it, and then I turn it on low and I watch it really close. And I might have to do a little bit by hand because like I said, it will totally devour it. But I will bring you in so you can watch. So I went ahead and stopped it. There's a couple of big chunks left in there because the other stuff was starting to break up too small. So I'm gonna do a little bit by hand, boop, but not much at all. That what took two minutes in there would have taken me probably 20-ish. So that's how it is. There is a big chunk right there that I'm just gonna get with a fork really quick. All right, so that's done. I'm gonna chunk this up really fast. And I planned on doing this from Frozen I did pull the chicken out the night before because I was trying to get everything set. I wanted everything out and ready to go so that way we could just cook and this would go quickly. And 
I ended up in not doing the video yesterday, so this was completely thawed. Had I thought about it, I would have thrown this into the broth to kind of marinate and give it some flavor, because right now it's just, even though I used broth in the bottom of it, it just is plain chicken. That is one thing about using the Instapot. I'm not always a fan of the texture of the chicken. It works if I'm going to mix it into something like this casserole with the cream of chicken soup and the Alfredo is going to be covered in that. I totally forgot it was supposed to be chunking this. That will help with the, the flavor in the chicken because it'll bake into that stuff so it will get some of that. Like I said, I have a love-hate relationship with my Instapot. I primarily use it for our boiled eggs and that's pretty much it. We have some rice that I have as well. I'm gonna try to do that in it. I've never done rice in it before. We're not huge rice eaters, but we do like rice once in a while. But I watch a gal who actually got rid of her rice cooker and is just using her Instapot now. It took her a while to get used to it because she's so used to the rice cooker. She did get rid of, actually I think on her last video I just watched, she's like, okay, I'm getting rid of my rice cooker. I'm just using my Instapot. Uh, as we are trying to pare down some of these kitchen utensils that we don't necessarily need every gizmo and gadget and cooker and baker and that kind of thing. Sometimes they are convenient and they are nice, but sometimes they are just a gadget taking up space in your cupboard when you have everything you need right there. Okay, so I just peeked at the stove and got water boiling for the noodles and I am just using stovetop. I can make my own, I know how to make my own, but I had this in the cupboard and I might as well use it. We do use packaged stuff. I try not to, but sometimes you just have to and it's a convenience item and there's nothing wrong with it. We try to make better choices and we do most of the time. Sometimes you just gotta. So this was in the cupboard, so I wanna get it used up and out of the cupboard. These aren't true fettuccine alfredo noodles, but I thought they would be fun. I think I'm only gonna cook half of this. Add some salt. This is my red salt from Utah, it's actually mined here in the U.S. Give that a quick stir. It's Redmond Real Salt is the name of it. And we're gonna let that come back up to a boil and cook those. Okay, so the noodles have just a few more minutes on them. The stuffing is fluffed and setting. I'm gonna mix up this one really quick. This recipe is for a nine by 13 pan, and I am not gonna do a nine by 13 because if you've watched any of my other videos, you know that I bake 90% of our food in this Ninja. So this pan does fit into this Ninja. It is a Pyrex dish made in the USA, but it doesn't say how big it is. The biggest thing with the Ninja is these handles end up making a 9x13 not fit in there. But we're going to do it in this and we're just going to modify the recipe just a little bit. My mom used to make this for us when we were younger and I can't find the recipe that she gave me that we grew up on. But this is so close I would bet it's almost the same thing before they had Google and the internet because that didn't exist then. We're going to make that prepackaged mix. It also says to uh, saute up some onions and celery, and I'm not doing that uh, today. It, three celery socks. I will link this one down below if you want to try it, but I'm totally going to tweak it. This one says one cap cream of chicken soup and one of cream of mushroom. I'm not going to put them both in there because, like I said, I'm going to make this smaller, and I don't want to use a half a can of each and then try to figure out what to do with them. So I'm just going to do straight cream of chicken soup and then I'm going to add sour cream, 
which was the ingredient that I remember my mom adding and I could not find a recipe that had sour cream in it. This one did. It says an eight ounce container. I'm gonna put a couple good sized blobs in it. And then it says one whole rotisserie chicken. I did chicken breast, so we're not gonna do that either. It would, this was, is amazing with rotisserie chicken. If you have one of those that you're shredding up, go for it, salt and pepper. So in this, I'm going to put some of this chicken And some of it's shredded, some of it's chunked. You could do this totally with chunked chicken because of the rotisserie chicken and whatnot. And then I'm gonna add this can and kind of see if I need to add more chicken. I do only have, I think, one more can of cream of chicken and one can of cream of mushroom. And then I actually have dry mixes to make cream of chicken and cream of mushroom. So I will start using that before, after this, once I get through these. I wish I would have mixed these two together before that I put the chicken in there, but that's okay. This is Nancy's sour cream. This is so yummy. It is probably too yummy good to be baking with, but that's all right. Baking it is gonna ruin its um, probiotic values, but it is the creamiest, dreamiest sour cream. I get it from Azure. I know you can get it at a few like health food stores and stuff like that, but it's, it's yummy. It is in my Azure videos, so I can link Azure down below and as well as if you wanna watch the video, I can't decide what I wanna stir this with. And although the stuffing is gonna have some great flavor, I love that the sun is out today in Michigan because it has been cold, snowy, and rainy, and on and off. It is April 2nd or 3rd, so yeah. And that's the timer for the noodles. They weren't quite done yet, but I just took them off the heat and left them in the hot water for a few minutes while we finished mixing this up. This is the last of my dehydrated garlic. That is why I have garlic going finally. Uh, this was uh, my harvest from 2021, and this is it. So the timing of getting that garlic done is perfect. I'm gonna put quite a bit of that in there. You don't normally need as much because there's no fillers or anything. When I do my own garlic powder, I don't put any anti-caking anything. That is just in all of my seasonings in my cupboard. They get hard, they clump. We are a very humid state. And so I have a lot of anti-caking uh, little dust kit packs and some of my stuff. I did not put any in that one and it did just fine. The biggest trick, and it seems kind of obvious, but I did it with the salt, which is what made me think of it. The steam from your pot or pan is going to add the moisture to it. So if you're going to add something, add it to your hand or to a spoon and then pour it in. Don't put your whole jar over the steam because that's going to get onto your utensil or into your jar and that's gonna add a ton of moisture making it cake faster. And I, I'm gonna add just a tiny bit of salt. I'm not a big salt person. I don't salt a lot of things. I undersalt a lot. I do realize that it adds some flavor, but I just, I don't. This pepper was a game changer for me. I've never been a pepper person. Uh, doing it that way, pepper actually has flavor. The pre-ground ones from the store are just flavorless to me. They just, they do nothing for me. So I do like to crack in some fresh pepper. I'm doing this recipe first because whatever I don't do, I'm going to turn into the tortillas. So whatever's left, it's fine. I'll just stuff them into the tortilla shells. Like I said, cream of mushroom would be great in this. I'm just not doing it today. You could also, if you were so inclined, you could add, I have a jar of dehydrated veggies. This was a frozen bag that I got at the store. I didn't have any room in my freezer, but it was some deal they were running if you bought a turkey or whatever it was, it wasn't a turkey. You got a bag of mixed vegetables for 13 cents and then they had them on sale for 50 cents and you could buy four bags. 
So I didn't have room in my freezer, but I wasn't going to pass up a, a good deal. So I brought them home, put them in the dehydrator, and then I just add them. You can do a quick chicken pot pie this way and add that into it. I'm not going to add it into this, though. I'm going to make it as is. The other thing that she did in her recipe, I've always mixed it in this way. You can just shred the chicken in the bottom of the pan and pour the mixture over it, and then put your stuffing on. But I just mix it. So I just went and grabbed the stuffing and just kind of giving it a fluff. And I am not a lefty. So from this point, if you wanted to, you could wrap this, put it right, label it, date it, and put it right into the freezer, and you would have a freezer meal. So on any other given day, if I'd have pulled up more chicken, I would have made two of these. I I put one into the freezer and then have one to cook um, in the next day or two for us. So we are not eating this tonight. So I'm gonna let this cool and then we're gonna get it into the fridge and then tomorrow, Monday? Yeah, tomorrow's Monday. My husband could come home from work. He beats me home by about two hours. He can throw it into the air fryer and then we can have dinner as soon as I get home. And he didn't really have to make a mess in the kitchen. He could just put it in there. So that total convenience item and it's made up and it went really quick. Okay, so we're gonna get the Alfredo sauce going. I have not used this Alfredo sauce before. I am totally not a fan of the jarred stuff. It tastes totally funky to me. I do not know what it is. I can add, can't add enough garlic or seasoning to make it taste humanly edible. Uh, so I did purchase this. This was also off of Azure and it seems pretty easy to make. So we're gonna see, and I may doctor it a little bit and add a little more garlic, because we really do like garlic. And so we're gonna go ahead and do that. So it is one cup of milk, four tablespoons or a half a stick of butter. I don't know when they started doing this to butter, because I haven't bought butter in a really long time, because I kind of stock it up and put it in the freezer. But how cute is that? Um, it worked out perfect for me today. I do not mind cutting my own butter. It just, this was all they had. They were running a sale and my husband picked up uh, the limit on sale because butter is crazy, crazy expensive right now. And we're gonna get that butter melting just a little bit. So it says a half a cup of this, which I'm guessing this bag is a half a cup, but just in case I'm going to measure it. I might have a whole cup in there. Hmm. So I think each bag will come with two, two servings. You can make two different batches or make a double batch. It's nice and thick. It says bring to a boil and then simmer for five minutes. Stirring occasionally. It got really thick really fast. That's nice. I am going to drain my noodles so I can pour it over and mix in the chicken. And I'm kind of wondering if I shouldn't have made the whole bag. I didn't know how much it would make. I had no idea. So I might end up making the rest of it. That is a really nice, it smells good. It is really good. I am gonna add more garlic just cause we like garlic, but that is yummy. It is so creamy, cheesy, wow. But like I said, we like a lot of garlic. So we're gonna, but I'm thinking I'm gonna make the whole bag. I'll just make that other 
half really quick. I don't know. We'll put it over the noodles and the chicken and we'll see what happens. If you've never seen this before, so you don't have to use 20 spoons, taste testing something, use one spoon that always goes in the pot and then pour it onto the spoon that you're gonna keep tasting from. Oh my gosh, yummy. I am not a pasta fan. I love a good macaroni and cheese, but noodles are not my thing. Spaghetti, not my thing. My husband loves it. So whenever I make a pasta, it's always a treat. Like I said, I was gonna buy this yesterday at Costco and they didn't have any out yet. It was a crazy Saturday. I never go into Costco on Saturday, never. And they had all the taste testing is going on again and that kind of stuff. So I don't know if you can see that. I think these noodles, I can't remember if these are the noodles they use or they use a, this other one. Like I guess I know nothing about pasta, this rigatoni. I bought both because I wasn't sure what I wanted to use today. But if this turns out good, I will make this for him way more often. And I will definitely get more of that Alfredo sauce from Azure in my next order. Because that, I bought one just to try looking for that ultimate sauce. And that's saucy, but I don't know if it's saucy enough. Um, especially once I add the chicken in. Like, hmm, let's add the chicken. Oh yeah, I'm definitely gonna make the other half that bag really quick and get it mixed in with that. Oh, this looks yummy. This might be dinner tonight. I bought some brioche sub buns. I'm trying to learn to make bread and I have started making a really good roll, but I just wasn't gonna have time to make any. So let's throw this other batch together. I'm not gonna bring you along with that. I'll show you once I get it all mixed up. Okay, so I got chicken Alfredo. I'm taking it off the stove. These are the containers. They were leftovers from somewhere and we just keep reusing them until they aren't usable anymore. My husband loves them because they fit perfectly in his lunchbox. I'm gonna put some of this in here for him. I don't want this to continue cooking, so I wanna get it out of the pan. So I'm gonna put some of this in here and then the other thing they do in the Costco one, there's tons of fresh parm on top. At least it looks fresh. Probably not as fresh as this, but you have to forgive me. I broke this the other day and I haven't replaced it yet. I'm struggling with if I want to replace it or I need to just put this one to rest though, but... I just, I can't find one made in the USA, and I can't actually find another one. This one, I didn't break it right away, but it broke kind of fairly quickly, I thought. The design on it has a little flaw. I love the way it works, though. It's not normally this difficult to put some, some cheese on there. So there's a bunch of fresh curlies on top and this is going to be delicious. I'm going to put the rest of it in another container and then I will just put a bunch of that on top and that way it's just ready to go. So I slid those to the back. I'm going to let the noodles cool a little bit more then we're going to get those into the fridge and then I am going to, I got, I'm so nervous, I bought green enchilada sauce and normally we do red but I wanted to try this so bad, I don't know why. I was just, I wanted to. So I'm gonna open it up and taste it and see if I like it first. If not, I did go to the store and buy one can of red enchilada sauce just in case uh, the green isn't gonna work for me. Normally I'd make my own enchilada sauce and it's amazing. I just couldn't put the effort into that today. So this is an item that I bought as well with those noodles that weren't on my shelf. But let's try this. Ooh, yum. All right, so I could totally go with this. Sometimes I just worry that 
You know when you have a vision of a flavor in your head and you're just craving it and you're like, oh, I'm going to do this and then it's not for your craving and it's still good, but you would have been disappointed. This is yummy. This is just a mild. I cannot do spicy. My husband can do a little more spicy than I can. So I'm going to pour into my chicken some of this. I want to save some to put on top because I only got one jar of this and I have a lot of chicken. I just want to give the chicken some flavor because like I said, Instapot chicken to me is just really bland and I don't care how much seasoning you throw in there or what you cook it with. To me, it's just bland. It tastes like boiled chicken. Um, all right, so we're gonna let, I should have had that sitting and going this whole time. So I'm just gonna wrap these in little tortilla shells and I'm gonna put cheese on top. And I was just thinking, I didn't get the tortilla shells out of the freezer. We have some homemade ones that, uh, are not homemade, raw ones that I could cook really quick. But I think I want to get that pack. My whole goal was to get some stuff out of the freezer and make some room. So I'll be back. So I'm just going to microwave these really quick. These are Azure as well. Go figure. I bought these a while ago. They're Stacy's Organic Big White Flour Tortillas. The ingredients are white flour, water, organic sunflower oil, baking powder, salt, and citric acid. They Everybody swears that they freeze really well and then they just warm them in the microwave to use or whatever so i'm gonna take them out of the bag and wrap them in a towel put them in the microwave for 30 seconds or so just enough to where i can roll them i don't need them totally heated because we're not eating these right now but they'll get these out of the freezer as well last thing we're gonna whip up enchiladas really fast i just washed out my counter and sanitized it really well because i'm just going to build these right on the counter these other people have microwaved them right in the bag and I don't microwave in plastic. I very rarely use the microwave to begin with and I don't know if I should have left them in the bag because yeah we'll see. Um, some got done, some got, some are kind of gummy and I'm sure it was from the moisture from the ice that was on them because of being in the freezer and I am going to pack these into this dish. Sometimes I will add refried beans, if I didn't say that already, into these. Sometimes I will put black beans. I've not made them with black beans in forever. I don't even think I've done that since my husband and I have been married. But we're just going to fill these really quick, assembly line style. So there was eight shells in that pack. I thought it was ten, but it's eight. So I want to divide this mixture into these all to use it all up. Sometimes I add the beans, the refried beans or the black beans too, depending upon if I use the larger shells, there's one size larger than this. And just to help fill it up and bulk it up. I did make salsa verde, a green sauce. My sister prefers a green sauce over a red sauce. So I'm trying to learn to use green sauce as well. Cause I do like to share. So I do have green salsa verde downstairs, but I had purchased that think for measure on a sale or something just to try it and see if we would like it. So like I said, I'm trying to get things. The chicken came out of the freezer. The tortilla shells came out of the freezer. This came out of the cupboard. The Alfredo sauce came out of the, the cupboard. Stuffing came out of the cupboard. The cream and chicken came out of the cupboard. So it's kind of like a pantry clean out. Sometimes you just have to look at what you have and go, okay, I need to rotate some of this out of here. We, we have our go-to meals. Don't get me wrong totally have our go-to meals that we, it's easy, we don't have to think about it, autopilot, we can just make it and go. But sometimes that requires a stop at the store rather than coming home and going, okay, what's in the cupboard? So that's why on Sundays I try to look at what do I already have? What can I get out of the cupboard so I can get it rotated out? Either A, it's just something we didn't care for, we'll eat it, don't care for it. So definitely when we're tired after work, we are not gonna make something we don't care for that kind of stuff. So trying to get stuff cleaned out. So look at what you have in your cupboards, you know, pick four or five items and go, okay, what can I make out of these to get them out of the cupboard this week or this weekend or over the next two weeks. And there is a group that does in January and February, a pantry, they call it pantry challenge, and they do no grocery shopping. A couple of them give themselves 
some leeway for like $30. So the one gal, so she can get half and half because she needs half and half for her coffee. And so she'll give herself $30 a month to spend at the grocery store. And they literally only eat from what's in their cupboards. And granted, these are, these are individuals that can and garden and they have stuff stocked up. But try to clean some of that stuff out. Get it rotated out so as you bring stuff in, you have fresh stuff and you're not going, oh my gosh, this is four years old. I need to just throw it away. That kind of thing. So challenge yourself to do that. And that's what I have been doing the last few weeks is trying to just use things that I already have here. All right, so let's bust these out. I talked to my mom for a few minutes on the phone, so I take a break, but I had to run and get cheese. I did not have any thought up here. So this is Azure's cheese. Uh, you've seen me grind it up in videos. I just freeze it on a cookie sheet, then throw it in here. It cooks up great from frozen. It melts great. It So I keep a little bit in the fridge once in a while, but it ends up going bad on us because we don't eat shredded cheese all the time. This is a uh, raw medium cheddar. So I'm going to use up some of this. I also have some black medium cheddar. I'm going to add a little yellow cheese to it just for color is the only reason. They're both a medium cheddar. There's no other reason. I do, we buy that once in a while, but I love this cheese. So I ran down and grabbed this really quick. I'm going to put a little on the inside and then I'm going to load up the top of it. But like I said, if I was cooking this right now, even frozen and you can see like I said I freeze it on a cookie sheet and then I just dump it into a bag and that way it's not one big clump but we're gonna put some inside each one of these all right then we're just gonna use my amazing grater we do pick up bag cheese once in a while see this little thing isn't totally dead it the parmesan cheese is a lot for it i could probably use a grater plain or a box grater it would probably be better for the parmesan and enchiladas you're truthfully sp truly supposed to just roll them and leave the ends open i close them just because you can get more in the pan so we're just going to roll them like little burritos sometimes i will dice up onions and put onions inside of them uh, that's my husband likes that but we're just gonna make these meat and cheese. I can't remember how long these shells have been in my freezer. I'd have to look at my Azure video to see. It had to be at least November's order. And I only kept them in the bag that they sent. I'm now wondering, I saved this pan being funny. This is actually the Costco pan. I was going to put the Alfredo into this. Um, joking with my husband, but I think that I might do this. So yeah, I think these are at least from November. So probably had I was going to leave them in there that long, I should have put them into a freezer bag. They're going to be fine. We're going to cover them with sauce and, and stuff. And maybe I'll do red sauce on one pan and green on the other, even though there's green inside. Yeah, this one's pretty crunchy as well. Now that they're not all going in the same pan, I don't have as much enchilada sauce. I almost wish I had another one of these now. There's probably a little more than a quarter of a can in there. And I'll just pop it into a little thing and pop it in the freezer and pull it out the next time I make them. I'll just put more on the inside and whatnot. So let's do cheese. I like this cheese because there's no dyes or anything in it, but some people just really feel like cheese is orange, and it's not. They make it that way. Uh, they say it's more pleasing to the eye. So, so I'm gonna load it up with this, and we'll put a little bit of this across the top just for color. Okay, friends, so we ended up with a stuffing casserole, two different versions of chicken enchiladas. We have a red one and a green one, as well as chicken Alfredo. It took me, truthfully, if you take out the camera time and having to move my tripod all the time, less than two hours, maybe about an hour and a half to cook the chicken, do it all up, and prepare all these meals. So we've got some for tonight. I have some that I can share and my husband is gonna have lunches and that kind of stuff. So I am so excited. 
Thank you so much for hanging out with me this morning and making meal prep for the next few days around our house. And I appreciate you. Be sure if you learned something in the video, hit the like button, ask any questions down below. I would love to hear from you as well as if you are so inclined and you have somebody who is looking for some ideas on how to get some chicken out of their freezer and get several different ways so you're not eating tons of the same stuff all the time, please share the video with them. I would greatly appreciate it as I am trying to build my channel and find new followers and people who like like things and I do canning, cooking. We're about to hit gardening like in full force in, I say this, I've been saying this for like three weeks, I live in Michigan and Mother Nature cannot make up her mind. We are into April now and we just had snow last night. Just a drizzle, it didn't stick, but it was enough to call it snow. Hang out with me and I will put some of my other videos up here if you'd like to watch those before I make my next upload. Thanks friend, have a good day.